myself. I came here when I was 16 years old. I left home to come fishing. And this is where I wound up. And that's the wheelhouse of the boat that I was on, the Cape North. That's the one I started on, 61. And I worked on deck and worked my way up to captain and from captain to go Wow. So scallop? scallop it's mostly scallops, offshore scallop. Okay. And how did you end up working for the Fisheries Museum? Well, I retired in 2013 from fishing. I fished for 52 years, and the wife said, you got to retire. So I retired, and I was home a year, and then I thought, well, I need something to do. So I put my name in here, and I've been here for seven years. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. All right. Let's go for a tour. Yeah, sure. We're... Wanna, we can start back here, yeah. I guess. So this is the wheel. This is the wheelers. This is where all the, the steering is done from, right here. And a lot of people come aboard, a lot of people come aboard and they, a lot of questions you get every day about 30 or 40 people. Why is the wheel backwards? <laughs> you, you do get that a lot. Not you know, good. how come you're back here and the boat's up there? Well, mm -hmm. it was like it was back in the sailing day and you watched the sails. That was the main thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, you get that. You know, why is the wheel back here? And a lot, a lot of people come aboard when they were allowed inside and they come aboard and, and you look, how can you see it through that small hole? You know, and, <laughs> and you, you know what I'm saying? They say, no, no, you stand off to the side and look ahead. Right. But a lot of people, uh, you know, just so no, so you mm -hmm. don't say nothing. I mean. So yeah. Teresa has a wheelhouse. Has a wheelhouse. Was that common for Grand Bank schooners? Back in, not the first, but in the years, this thing was built in 1938. Okay. They had motors in them then. And when they started to put motors in, then they didn't need the big sail like the Blue Nose got on the stern, big Mavis, they didn't need that. Mm -hmm. So then they put wheelers on. The only thing this had back here on the back spar was what they call a riding sail or a storm sail. Mm -hmm. Just something to steady the boat, just a little sail. Okay. And up on the forward, they had a, this thing carried, I think, was 7,000 square feet. The blue most carried just for 11,000, I think. <laughs> that's the difference. Like, they don't have the big sail back here. Right. Because she had a motor. Mm -hmm. So if you, I know it's, it's closed to the public this year due to COVID, but um, what's it like below decks? Paint us a picture. It's, it's good. It's good. And back in the day, it's, it's laid up very good. When you go down here, you have 11, you got 10 thick ends, and the skipper got a little room, now not much, but he's got a place of his own. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the engine room, and then you go into the fish hole. It's a big fish hole in this boat. Mm -hmm. And then you go up forward, you get the galley, and 16 more people sleeps up there. She carried 28 people all together. 28? Yeah. She had 27 bucks, but there was always somebody else. You know, everybody couldn't, you know, even if you were steaming or somebody else. Mm -hmm. And the fish she carried, her biggest trip was 425,000 pounds of salt cod. Uh -huh. But she had some on deck. She had a few on deck. So I say down below she carries maybe 385, 390. And in comparison to the blue nose, the blue nose carried 500,000 pounds below deck. Because, I say because, this thing had a motor. Mm -hmm. The blue nose didn't, so therefore that was all fish oil aboard the blue nose. Mm -hmm. That's where he put the extra fish in. Makes sense. Yeah, there was no motor, so the, where the motor's at in this one, it was all fish oil. Right, it's a pretty big motor too. <laughs> mm, it's a big old jumping motor for a boat. It's only 300 horsepower, but I mean, it's a big motor. Yeah. It, they say they send her along like eight, nine, nine knots. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty quick. It was for back in the day, yeah. yeah. So, Tressa was launched in 1938? No, December the 14th, 1938. Okay. She was launched and she started fishing in that winter. Right. In and 30 and 39. And they would go off? They, in the winter time, they would just go off here, I say just off here, like on the banks. Yeah. And go like for 10, 12 days, take ice, bring the fish in fresh. In the summertime, and then they would make maybe a trip holiday. Most of them made a trip all but down on what they call a stone fence which is you go down in the gully between Bank Row and, and St. Pierre Bank. There's deep water and they call it the gully. Okay. And the stone fences along the edge of it and that's where 
Halbert barely hung out. <laughs> and in the summertime, Ninchi would make about three trips to the Grand Banks, a month, month and a half at a time, till she got back here. Now, mind you, they weren't out to sea for a month, month and a half. They had to go in Newfoundland every maybe two weeks, 20 days, three weeks, just to pick up food and water, you know, fuel, just supplies in general. Mm -hmm. Then they would stay in for a night or so, and then they would go out and they'd keep doing this until they had a full. Okay. So it all depended on the fishing. If they could get lots of fish, they'd done it in one. Sometimes they'd be gone a month and a half. Hmm. A, and how long did she fish for? Like, was it was it into the sixties? Yeah, she started. Like I say, she was built. She was launched in uh, thirty eight. She started a fishing career in the winter in thirty nine, mm -hmm. and she fished till I think her last fishing trip was sixty two. She went down in. Uh, she was owned by a company in Halifax, Halifax Fish Company. Mm -hmm. They had her till fifty two. They sold her to a swickering company here in town. And she fished, and she went down, she fished in 62, 63, a guy by the name of Ari Oxner, Captain Ari Oxner. He took her down, he says, I'll go down and get a crew around Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. He left there, it was very few people, got down Newfoundland, no go! Because they come out with ones like the Sable Mat, and nobody, here you had to go in the little dories, all kinds of weather, snow, blow, thick fog, so. It was at the it was at the age where nobody just didn't want to do it anymore. Mm. Yeah. So how can you explain how the dories worked? Like how they were launched from Tressa? When this okay, she left Lewenberg. She carried twelve dories. Mm -hmm. This one. When she left Lewenberg, she had six on the port, six on the starboard. There was the only thing I got to explain it to you is that picture there. It was a hook. They hooked in the bow and in the stern of the dory, and the ice come up, hoisted them up by hand, and pushed them over the side, dropped them in the water. It's a guy is what he's doing right there. Mm. That's when he got him home for him. Wow. And they got up, they'd say at like three o'clock in the morning, they hit their trawl up, went out, set it, then came back and had their breakfast. That when he let the trawl sit for like a couple hours, and then they started. Wow. It was long. It was just a hard old, hard old goal. That's a long day. But but as it is, we say it's a hard old goal, but back in the day, when this vessel came out, Whoa, she was top of the line with the wheel loads, the motor. You know, she at that time she was top of the line. Mm -hmm. And then, then came became with the trawlers and mm -hmm. sort yeah. of pushed them by the wayside. Yeah, so on the it's, trawlers, like the keep saying You don't go off, you don't leave them. Everything is done aboard the boat. A lot more comfortable. Comfort this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this thing they read about a bathroom. Twenty eight men, no washroom, nothing aboard here. I guess none of the schooners did. Yeah. And no washroom or nothing. So you know what comfort it was. I mean, Dory's wet all the time. And just, no. Yeah. So then she went to the Labrador for two or three summers. I'm buying fish from trap fishermen on the Labrador oh. and salting them and bringing them back. Hmm. I, I think she took a couple loads of coal to Newfoundland because I know a guy that was on her and they took a couple loads of coal over to Newfoundland. And, and then in 66, that was it. They put her up for sale. That's what can come to formed a society and bought her and here she sits for 67 years since 1967 here's where she sits yeah. and the fisheries museum started with Teresa and she, I don't think she was tied up around there no. I think she was down to the rob railway dock when they started okay either railway dock or swickers dock when they started first amazing and, and then they got into the buildings and they brought her up here and, yeah wonderful so she's got a long history this boat has got a long history Mm. And she's only, believe it or not, she's only four feet shorter than the blue nose. Really? This one is 139, the blue nose is 143. Wow. And this is what they call a knockabout because she don't have a bowsprit. Right. That's what they call them, a knockabout. Knockabout. Yeah. A little more robust maybe mm. <laughs> from the Grand Banks. <laughs> yeah, right on, right yeah. on. Yeah. Well, let's have a walk around deck yeah, if sure. you don't mind. Sure thing. Uh, yeah, it's kind of low there. They, they were, they were the trawl. See, you see that when you painted the trawl, they used herring, squid, mackerel, and this is where they cut them up. Really? And this, the reason this comes out 
is because you've gone a month and a month and a half. These very spare ones, because you would cut them through. Believe it or not, with a sharp knife, you would, you would cut the doors through. So That's why they could come up with this one. So they would keep the knives right? Yes, yes. Yeah, we just got wooden ones now. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm sure it was, but not looking like this when she was fishing, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, might have got paid up maybe once a year. <laughs> yeah. Not shiny like this, I'm sure. What are these? That is ventilation. That's the exhaust for the motor. That's the muffler, one of the exhaust. One of the ventilators, one is in, one is out. This, those six bunkers here, I call them. Yep. Therefore, the motor is right below. So, in the, every cylinder on the motor is always separate. Like, see, six cylinder, but they're all separate. Mm -hmm. They're not like a motor today, which is all cased in. That's where you take the pistons off of If you had to do an engine job onto it or something happened, that's where you took the pistons off through. Stumps. So this would be like a bilge pump. Exactly right. Back in the day, that was a bilge pump. Went right down to the bilge and pumped it. And water on deck and just went over the side. Awesome. Yeah. And what's this structure right here? That's right? where the fish are. That's where you, as the hatch, you put the fish down through. Okay. She had two. That was one there. But when she came here to the museum, these were ladder. You know, they could go up and down. It's the same, or it's the same as that. Right there. Nice big bell. <laughs> I let the kids ring out and get quite excited. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, is, is the bell original? And the, like, is everything? Yes, original? I would say it's original because they went out there, like in the summertime, take for example. And they, they went out in the dories, they got thicker fog. I mean, some of them didn't make it back, a lot of them did. You know, they all told. He rang the bell, like you know. The, I fished on George's and I scalping for years and a lot of years. And then there used to be a Russian fleet come over there years ago. They had their smaller draggers. They had their small. They had their smaller. They used to tow herring nets. They rode there for herring. Then you'd have a big mothership, which was like 300 feet long. You just put the herring over there. Take a fog. That's all you put here. If you got close to it, that's all you were heard when <laughs> ringing up the bill said you didn't touch your gear. So I think it was used here for like foggy and that stuff, you know, just to, I'm sure it wasn't used to call them at a bunk because it would have went over the side. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> so this is the wheel, the wheelhouse of the vessel that you started yeah, on? Yeah, Cape North. Yeah. And where would you have sailed on the Cape North? Right here, because the fish pack was there at the end of 61. Right. National was right here, man. So old Captain Matt Mitchell. He worked there for years. He's a nice old guy. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard great things about him. Oh, Matt was one one of a kind. I'll put it that way. He was one of a kind. Nice guy. Yeah. But this is what you call a break. Okay. Meaning, see you're punching into a breeze of wind. All boats got it. All you go over and look at the sable and scallop dragons. You're punching into a breeze of wind, like 30, 40 mile an hour wind. You got a sea come over the bow, which is <laughs> very common. If you didn't have this, it would go back and next thing. So what happens is the sea comes over the bow, comes back, hits this, and goes, breaks up and goes up to the scupper. Oh. That's what he called it, break, dick, break the way. So. Makes sense. Yeah. Would be the fish hold? Uh huh, right on, ma'am. That's the fish hold, too. Yeah, same as back there, but it mean the cover on it's the same. But when she came here in the museum, we just took it off, but there's just another way down. Very nice. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
special for visitors who come board. Oh, they come board here and they say, do a lot of money. So you can, we don't care if we can get below. We just want to get on a boat. Yeah. You know, honestly, this year here, we get a lot, we've had a lot of people, more people than I thought would be around because you're not allowed down below. I figure, oh, let's go board there. But no, 90% of them said we're just glad to be on a boat. Yeah, I bet. It's such a historic one. Yeah, well. and the kids that high come aboard and I don't, 90% of them said, oh, we need to be on a boat and get a kick out of that. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> bad. It's a special experience. It is. And it to is. get to chat with yeah. the former sea captain. Yeah. The little girl there yesterday. She came back. <clears throat> she said, Are you captain? I said, Well, we just sit there to the war. She said, Do you sleep aboard or do you go home? I said, Man, I said, Little girl, it's good many years, so I slept aboard. <laughs> now I go home. <laughs> yeah, a little more comfortable. Yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah. She would have a form of something. Okay, and a for sale. Yep. Right? And she would a have a form of something. Then back there, them, loop, them hoops is for, like I told you, when you have a riding sale, storm sale, riding sale. People call it business sale. Business sale or something like that. So I guess the difference, one of the differences between Teresa and Juno is Teresa would, would motor more than oh, the sale. Oh, Oh, yeah. And the sales were just I'm sure steady. on a breezy day, they would put them up. But she was mostly motor. Right. This was her, it's not a main sale, it's not a performance, but this was her big sale. I'll put it out there. Mm -hmm. Performance there. So, so up forward here below decks is where the crew would. 16 crews. 16. From here up, so where the cook done all his cooking, the stove, that's the stove pipe right there. Okay. Over there. And he done, he done all his cooking with 16 people. And the only way to get down was here. Hmm. So the skipper, he was no better than anybody else. If it was a breeze of wind, he wanted heat. He had to come up over there. <laughs> that was the only way down. And this is this anchor. windless oh, or yeah, anchor? On the anchor. There's a motor in that box there, a 10 horsepower of Acadia over here in the green box. Okay. That was all geared up with a chain and network. She had two anchors, one for on the Grand Banks, one for in port. And the two of them is over there. You see two big anchors over here on the wharf behind that billboard. That's the two anchors off of this boat. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Do you know what the difference was between the two? Like the oh, one was 750 pounds. Like you told me one was only 300 something. Oh. <clears throat> They're just, just different weights. One from the bank. I guess they needed the heavy boat over in place. And and they had, like this place here, I think this might have been, I'm just surmising, but I think it was. When they put the sail up, they would just, you know, give them easier. Instead of hauling like this, they would just wrap it around there and take it up. So is this operated from the <clears throat> engine as well, or is it, does it Over have here? its own? Right here. See the chain, see the cogs up there? Ah, uh, yes. See them right here? Yes. It comes back, there's a chain that goes on, and this is the motor that's, that's in there, 10 horsepower motor. Yeah, that ran all that. <clears throat> and this is, is this wood? Yes, that's wood. Yeah, back in the day, that was wood. Yeah. It's amazing. And these two, yeah. I see, I think that's what they'd be used for, like, hoisting the sails, maybe sometimes, and, you know, yeah, maybe they had something. I don't know, but it's something. Yeah. So back in the day, she would have had dories kind of stacked on either side. Six on the port, six on the starboard. That was the top. Twelve dories. Twelve dories. Twenty-eight men. And I'm sure over a twenty-five year career that there was times she went out shorthanded. I'm you know, I don't know, but I would say so sometimes she might have only had ten, but her top was twelve. That was her top dories. Two, two, two men, two men, two men, that was 24 men right there. That was good. Made the engineer, the cook. But I'm sure it was time she went out, like, you know, shorthanded, like anybody, any fishing. 
So the crew, would that also include like someone to throat the fish and clean the fish? There's guys that sit the trawl, bait it and all that, that's just the one crew. There was no two crews. They do it all. They get up like two or three o'clock in the morning. And they were, if they got lots of fish, they would work until probably 10 or 11 o'clock that night. And bring the fish back aboard here and then they'd have to come back here and throw them and split them and do it all over again next morning. And so they do that for, you said a month, month and a half? On the Banks is, they would do it for a long time. I figured the only break they got was when they went in Newfoundland, you know, to get, get supplies. They had to go and get supplies. So then they would get probably a day or so break. This is a great way for people to experience Blue Nose 100 because we often speak of the Grand Banks fishing yep. scooters. And while Blue Nose 2 is a replica, yeah. this is, this is what they call, the real deal. This is what you call an old salt bank. A lot of people say, well, what's a salt bank? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the summertime, they went to the Grand Banks and month, month and a half and salted their fish and didn't come back till they got their full wound. That's where you got the word old salt bank. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. You know, the salt fish. Yeah. That's where that came from. Amazing. Well, thank you so much You're for having welcome. us on. You're Appreciate more than it. welcome. Yeah. We'll see you around. Yeah. Now I gotta get to work. Put the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, David.